Hello, I'm Lloyd Rudolph. Suzanne Rudolph is very sorry that she can't be with you here tonight. Her doctor has advised her against traveling from California to New York. But even so, she's going to talk to you about our work over a 50-year career on India and our scholarship about India. We first encountered India in 1956 when we drove overland from India in a well-stocked Land Rover. It was nine years after Indian independence. Suzanne, that's me, was 26. Lloyd was 28. We had just finished our PhDs and had Ford Foundation Foreign Area Training Grants. Good money. Subsequently, we spent every fourth year doing research in India. We did this 11 times until our retirement in 2002. Three-year intervals were long enough for change to reveal new images. The decline of the sari and the dhoti, the rise of the salwar kameez, then of trousers, tights, t-shirts, changing Hollywood style from the wet sari to the wet kiss, the nationalization of tastes, as dosas and idlis migrated north and chapatis migrated south. Our engagement with the area, with area studies, political development and modernization theory, began in 1956. There weren't many people who could interpret the world beyond Istanbul. Our next 50 years studying India often proved to be a bumpy ride. At the beginning of the, 19th, of, the, of the 1950s, there were sunny days. The romance of Gandhi, admiration for Nehru, the commitment to international cooperation and development. Then, in the 1960s, came the stormy weather of the Cold War. America asked developing countries to choose between the US and the Soviet Union. India pleased neither by choosing to be non-aligned. When we took forth for India from London, there weren't any concepts or models around for studying India. Our 1950s PhD classmates at Harvard were pursuing well-trodden well paths, subjects related to the old Europe, to America or European countries, Nobody thought of studying the new nations, such as independent India. Suzanne was told by senior faculty that it was all right if she wanted to study India, but Lloyd was told that India was not a subject suitable for a male graduate student. When we returned to Harvard from our research in India, and asked to offer a course on India, our request was refused. We were told we could offer a course on India as part of the British Empire. The next year we succeeded in introducing courses on Indian government and politics, modern Indian history, and Indian civilization. In 1964, we accepted appointments at the University of Chicago's Outstanding South Asia Center, where for 34 years, we taught courses on India. After World War II, India, figuratively if not literally, was the first colony to become a new nation. Its prospects for democratic government and economic development were uncertain but hopeful. It was an ancient civilization as well as a new nation. Our first book, the modernity of tradition challenged modernization doctrine that tradition would be swept into the dustbin of history and that they were destined to become like us. We found that tradition was adaptive and that we could learn from them. And so we learned. 